Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, this is my tutorial on the most simple way to make uh, a texture inside of Blender with the PBR uh, materials. So what we're going to be doing right off the bat is we're just going to go to Polygon and we're going to get one of their free textures because I think Polygon textures are fantastic. I use them all the time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download uh, Ground Clay. So um, anyone works here. Um, I think just about anyone works. Uh, we're going to go to free download. I'm going to hit continue browsing. Um, and we're just going to wait for that to download for a second. And in the meantime, we're going to open up our Blender file. Now, I delete the default queue and all that stuff by default. But in this case, I actually want to add a plane back in. So I'm going to hit Shift A, uh, create a plane. And then I'm going to hit S5 just to make it bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the material properties here. And I'm going to click it. And then I'm going to hit New. And so uh, if you don't see this right off the bat, make sure that the use nodes is clicked on. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so that's right off the bat. That's the that's like the baseline material. I'm going to call this ground clay. OK, great. So once you get to this point, we're now going to hop into shading. Right now, as you can see, if we kind of just move this around, um, then the color will change. Now, I am actually going to be dragging in uh, textures, as I said, from Polygon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check on that download. Uh, I'm going to open it up. I'll just cut it out. I'll go to desktop uh, and I believe I already downloaded it. So if I go into this, then you see the ground clay here. I can just copy and paste it, replace the file. Sure. Uh, and right. So then our ground clay is in there. I'll close out the Internet here and then uh, we'll come back in here. So in my file explorer, I'll open this back up uh, and I'm going to find where I saved uh, my polygon texture. Uh, here it is, ground clay, regular 3K. Now, for this one, um, reflection is not really necessary. I'd say the only three you need are um, the color variation one. I do recommend that you use variation uh, one in this case because if we actually open these both up, so as you can see, they're basically the same texture. The only difference is, is that I believe variation two is technically an albedo map, which is just a color map, but there is no shadows involved. So as you can see, shadows, no shadows, shadows, no shadows. Uh, and that's just a different workflow. We don't really need that. We'll just use the, the variation one for this. So we're going to drag this in. Uh, and if anyone's familiar with um, Unreal Engine, um, you can't. Uh, in Blender, you can only drag them in one by one. Unreal Engine, you select like four and drag them in. Uh, but in Blender, you do have to do them one by one. So we'll keep that in mind. I uh, will drag the gloss in. And then we'll drag the normal in. So right off the bat, what we're going to do is we're just going to organize these a little bit, move them over. We're going to go to the glosses sRGB. We're going to change that to non-color data. And then we're going to go to the normal map. And we're also going to change that to non-color data. So what we can do now is we can go and take the color map and plug it into the base color. So I'm actually going to put this in rendered mode for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add in by hitting Shift A. I'm going to add a spotlight. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. And I'm going to turn this up to like 50 just so we can see. So as you can see, once I just touch the base color, um, the picture is there, but we're not, you know, it doesn't look realistic. It just looks almost like wallpaper. And that's why we have the other um, maps here. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug the gloss into roughness, and then we're going to plug the normal into the normal node. So as you can see, again, this doesn't really look right. Like it's, it look, you know, it looks a bit better. We're getting some, I guess, like bumps. Um, but we actually need to do some variations, uh, or I guess we have to change uh, the gloss and the normal so that it plays nice with Blender. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to go to Search, and we're going to type in Normal Map. Now, you don't want the normal. You want the normal map. It is very important. So what you're going to do is you're just going to hover over this line, click it, and then as you can see, that does kind of help a little bit. Um, you know, it looks a little more realistic, but we're still getting this really weird like shine, this gloss almost looks like the ground is wet. The reason is, is because you can't technically plug a gloss into the roughness um, map. They are very closely related. Um, and the reason is, is because if we open up gloss here, so this is the inverted roughness map and the roughness is the inverted gloss map. So if we just went into Photoshop, uh, and we just hit like control I will invert it and then um, you would have the roughness map. But luckily you can just do that right inside of Blender. So if you ever have a gloss map, you have to invert it um, unless you're going for some weird look. 
uh, where you want it to kind of look like that, but I would recommend, oh, I don't know what happened there, uh, but I would recommend that you invert it. So we click that. And as you can see, everything looks like dirt right, right after that because it's uh, we're getting more definition in there. And so if you want to play around with it, you know, you could turn up the normal map a little bit. Um, as I said, this is a very basic tutorial. You know, you could do stuff like, you know, adding a bump map, like displacement for a lot of stuff. But this is uh, just the most like kind of like baseline thing to do. Um, but there is one more thing I want to show you. So um, if you have uh, Node Wrangler, which is an add on that you can add in. Um, it just comes with Blender. You go to Edit Preferences, type in here, um, oops, Node Wrangler. You can turn that on. Then you can actually just hover over this and hit Control T. Uh, but if you don't have it, no worries, because we can just manually add it in. So we're going to be adding um, mapping information here. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug all these in here. Um, but this is actually not enough. As you can see, that kind of just like destroys everything like it doesn't really now there's no texture at all because blender doesn't really know how to handle this because we're telling it information that it, it doesn't really understand i guess like it's like all this stuff is just zero so it's it's not you know it can't show the texture correctly so what we need to do is we need to hit shift a and you go to texture coordinate and what we're going to do is we're going to take the uv slot and we're going to drag that into the vector slot once we do that, as you can see, the texture is now back. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to hit Shift A, value, click that here, and then we're going to drop that in to the scale. So what this lets us do is this is like an easy slider that we can adjust. And as you can see, once this goes up, then the texture gets smaller. As it goes down, the texture gets bigger. Uh, and that's just basically like how it, it, what this is saying is that if it's at three, then on this square, uh, the texture is tiling three times. So three uh, texture tiles across. If you just open up the UV editor, that's our, our um, that's just our uh, color map. So basically, if it's at three, then this will be going uh, three times across our plane. And uh, if we go back into rendered mode here, um, maybe I'll actually just drag this up a little bit and I'll turn this up to like 150. Uh, higher than that, actually do 500 just so it's lit up and uh, yeah so as you can see um, it's uh, there's a lot of things that you can do in blender to make this look even better but this to me is like this is the baseline um, just for creating PBR materials uh, we have the color map which is telling blender you know how everything should look that's the one that we would most kind of recognize as being like the picture of our texture uh, the gloss map is just telling it how to um, like how, how glossy it is, obviously. Um, so if something is very rough, then it's not going to reflect um, light, really. Like it's um, like it, it, the best comparison is like picture it being like uh, something that is extremely glossy is a mirror. It reflects light perfectly. And that's why it is a mirror. So something like this sand here, the light will hit it and it'll bounce in every direction. And it's also very rough. Like it's not going to uh, bounce a lot of light off of it. Um, so um, then what you're left with um, is that. So obviously with the dirt, we want it to look like this. Uh, now, the normal map is kind of an interesting one. So it actually tells light how it should react when it hits that surface. So as you can see, it's kind of a funky looking map. Um, but the computer can read this in ways that depending on the color. So like red will kind of, um, it's like facing one direction. And then uh, there's also a blue and a green channel. And that's how you kind of get this... Uh, I guess that realistic effect, like if we just take this out, um, then as you can see, like you're not really getting those shadows in there, but if we flip that back in, then you're getting like, it, it's much more defined. Like if I actually, maybe I'll turn this up to like 10. Yeah. So as you can see now, it's like very rough and uh, yeah. So uh, as I said, this was very basic tutorial. Uh, I did kind of simplify things a little more uh, than they need to be in some areas, but if you want to just get a texture into Blender and get it working, this is probably the easiest way of doing it. I know this tutorial was a little bit longer uh, just for how simple it was, but if you are brand new to Blender, I, I think that this will give you a pretty good idea. Um, I would recommend that you you start doing this quite a bit with the texture coordinate and the mapping. Uh, and then the value is just something I kind of added in, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, these will allow you to change the shape and the look of your texture without actually changing the, the, the underlying UV. Um, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Um, I might be able to cover that in another tutorial. Um, but for now, um, this is the easiest way of just adjusting your material without doing anything destructive. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there, guys. Uh, I hope uh, this tutorial helped you. 
Uh, if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Um, if you are already subscribed, thank you very much for stopping by the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.